All right, so today I want to demonstrate what we're going to do is we're going to take the Tyco Power Torque. Um, this one's already been rebuilt once, but we're going to tear it down and try to use some more modern methods to get more performance out of this thing. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to show you something. Let's try this here. A that is an AHM GP18. As you can see, running pretty nice. What did I do? Well, let's take a look at it here. what I did to it. This was the first locomotive I ever got way back when for Christmas about 1975. Spirit of 76 and took a real beating over the years because I really played hard with this thing. Okay, essentially what you have is this motor is the one that is terribly maligned. Everyone thinks it's just crap. Well, that's totally not true. It is a three pole motor, so it's not as smooth as a five pole or rare earth motor. But the drive system is pretty good. Um, it's basically, it's about as good as any. What I did was I made sure that I got pickup from both sides and as always I put red on the right as it's moving forward engineer side I put my little DCC stand-in circuit board here and I disassembled this motor completely took all the core out and everything and I used a product that while it's not new it's called OxGuard and this is not Lynn Westcott's guard that he used way back when um, used it on track and stuff this is a more modern version and it really does make a difference huge difference as you could see when I have this thing on the track it uh, runs really nice nice and slow not too loud it's got good response and I don't need to apply as much power to it now as you would normally have to apply in order to get it to move and there's a couple secrets to that that um, we'll save for another video I'll really do another one so I've got a pile of these things and I love them uh, one of the most important parts of it is this weight that goes into the top of the shell. And it should sit properly right above right above the rear truck. I'm going to add a couple up front here. Kind of balance it up. And then I'll talk about about um, what that does later. Um, but those weights are very important to make this thing run nicely. All right. So now let's take a look at power torque. Power torque. The power torque drive system consists of pickups from the rear, it's metal, and the axles pick up directly to this metal frame, go to this wire, and head towards the motor. This is the motor. This is a pancake motor inside a metal frame, and there's a lot of people 
immediately dismiss Pancake Motors. But here's the thing, Pancake Motors are incredibly reliable if they are kept well maintained. The other thing about them is they are super easy to repair. And what we're going to try today, look, first let's, let's give, give it a try here on the bench. And I believe I rebuilt this one time. And let's take a look, see how she works. Now if I remember right, I want to connect one on to this light switch. There's actually two right here. There are two little spots underneath these are the brushes. And you want to be real careful because they're really easy to lose. So if I connect one on if I can get it connected right. See if I can connect it about right here. Alright, let's see if I got this right or if I got a short. Nope, I got nothing. Break off, momentum off, power on, correction. Okay, so that's not right. So then I want to connect directly to these guys right now. Okay, one second. Let's try that again. Now I've got it more solidly connected and if I give it just a little bit of power a little bit and it's working okay now since I know that I already did this one one time basically what I did was I cleaned it up and put it back to the way it would have come from the factory now let's make a modification to it to make it run better so what we're going to do, we're going to carefully disassemble this thing. We're going to remove the light bracket with a little Phillips. And you know what we're going to do? We're not going to do that. We're going to, we're going to take a picture of it first, the way it is right now. I like to do this so that I remember where do things go. Now I already know where things go and I have another one that I can have plenty more of these that can look if I if I was to forget, which I'm not gonna forget, but if, if it's your first time, take some pictures. And let's save the screws right here. This particular power torque is out of a Super 630. But I'm going to use it on my Midnight Special. Yep, I am going to make the Midnight Special three axles. And what some people don't know is that the two axle and the three axle Tyco locomotives have basically the same power torque setup. But on the two axle, oh, okay. Now that I took this cover off, I forgot that this was the easy one. I'll show you now what I got here. Okay, let's take a look inside there. I took the cover off, and as you can see, okay, you can see the two brushes are sitting in there. There's one, there's two, and here are the two springs that go above them. Normally, you remove these two things here. You put the brush down in there, the spring on top, you hold it carefully, slide these in, and, and lock them in place. If you take the whole cover off, well, if you're careful, you won't lose any right here. You do not want to lose those screws, or those springs. Or the brushes they're pretty tough to find again all right and the other thing is right there is some thrust washers thrust washers super important and we're going to do something with those all right let's take a look again let's 
get the set up here where we we're going to take those out and make sure I'm going to make sure that we can see what we're doing here all right so I got my tweezers and like I always say somewhere I read from master modeler get good tweezers learn how to use them I got a set of six of them on eBay for like three bucks so I'm gonna put my springs over here because I don't want to use them I don't want to lose them I'm gonna take these two brushes put them over here when we put them back on we're gonna to need to take this thing apart and then we will re um, we'll put them back in place the way they go so what I want to do is I want to take this thing apart now and I'm going to clean the parts in it now I've already cleaned these once before but I'm going to clean them again to show you show you how the top one is not connected by a screw it just pulls out it's kind of spring loaded or it's shaped like a spring this bottom one is kept in there with a little knob if you lift up carefully you should be able to get it going okay I got it just above right here right there oops I had it I'm trying to be extra careful with this because I don't want to break it there we go got it out okay put that over there in our parts now inside this thing are two of these little bushings in here it's important we don't lose those because we need them and there is also a little copper bushing for the shaft on the core all right we'll get to that in a minute now some people say if you take the take the motor i'm going to take the gears off here if you take the motor out the core out you're gonna wreck it the magnets are gonna be no good that is not my experience at all done this a hundred times and nothing like that has ever happened ever okay now I'm gonna take very careful I'm gonna take some of these flush cutters I got at Walmart for like five bucks I don't want to use my good ones but I'm not trying all I'm trying to do is pry this off I'm not cutting anything there's a metal gear here I want to get under it and I want to carefully get it off without wrecking it. There we go. Now, there should be. And if you remember on that one, when I pull it off, the gear part goes down. Okay, so now I can take out the core. And there it is. Check inside here for a thrust washer. And is there one? Is there one here? Nope, this one has bushings. Okay, sometimes they have little thrust washers on here, and you got to be very careful when you need those. So, what's the over there for now? Okay, these magnets in here. So, something you should know about Tyco Tyco is huge into slot cars, and slot cars use pancake motors. And they're pretty advanced. Um, slot cars are still big today. And these magnets here, you can actually buy replacement magnets that are even stronger than these ones that are in here. All right, so I got white on the left and I got dark on the right. And I think these are glued in. Yep, so that's not going to hurt us any. So if they're not glued in, I take them out. I take them out and clean them. All right, now what we want to do is we want to do some cleaning. 
This is one of the times when I'm going to tell you to use this thing right here that I tell you don't ever use it. This copper shaft here will rip stuff apart. Fortunately, these are heavy duty frames. And if we're careful with this, if you use this for all the time, instead of using the one with the silver shaft, which is much gentler, use this one with the copper shaft, you're going to wreck all kinds of stuff. And you don't want to do that. So let's see what we got here. Just on low. What I want to do is I want to polish the parts where the wheels go in. And this thing polishes them right away. Just like that, they are nice and polished. I'm going to hit both sides where wheels rub. Then I'm going to look in here where these gear shafts are. I've had ones with these where these um, little knobs here where the gears go. I've had ones where they are broken off. And I'll tell you what, you can fix that. It is not that hard. I'm going to hit the little bushing here a little bit. I don't want to rip it apart. We'll hit some of this inside here and smooth this out. Okay. That's all I'm doing. That's it. That's all I'm going to do on that is clean it up. Well, I didn't clean where the axles go. Let's put that one down. Inside here where the axles go. That's, per, that's an important part. Okay, so now, what I want to do is I want to start doing something that I haven't done in the past, except a couple of times now, but I've really found it to be a very, very, and um, so it's an advanced technique, and it's also a lost art. Way back when Lynn Westcott was the guy at Model Railroader, he used to talk about this stuff called ox guard. And I got ox guard, I think I got it at Home Depot. You can get it at Lowe's, Menards. Um, what it does, it's a coating to make sure you get good contact. And they use it in, in uh, heavy electrical work. I have happened to use it on... I had an LED light bulb that was flickering in my workshop and I thought you know maybe I should put some ox guard on the screw threads I just put a little bit on there screwed it in no flicker ever since on that AHM I went all out and ox guarded every every basically non-moving part okay so now I got some ox guard in there and we'll keep it like that alright now Let's take a look. First of all, this one with the light switch on it. Let's get that. Let's get that old wiring off of there. We don't want to have that on there anymore. I mean, that's cool that there's a light in there, but we can use that later. get too much solder on here and see if we can get some of that off. So there is a hole in this thing. Well, there's a lot of solder on there. It does not want to come off. Okay. Close enough, though. 
if we got to get rid of it, we'll take our our motor tool and get rid of it. Um, so what do I want to do? Let's see if we can find the old lineman's pliers. We're going to take this guy. We're going to put him in the lineman's pliers like this. And now we're going to shine him up. Not too much, I don't want to rip it apart. Both sides. Oops, make sure you can see it. Let's, Let's see if we can. There, that might be a little better. Alright, so I've shined them up. That's one. Get the other one. Some of it is cosmetic and some of it is for electrical. The outside, I just like it shiny, tells me that I've touched it before. The inside one, I intend to coat the inside of this with OxGuard where it touches its spring. We'll hit this spot where the screw goes. I'm kind of screwing up by touching it with my bare hands because who knows what oil or grease that I've already touched that I shouldn't be getting on there. But I think we'll be okay. This light bracket. Um, this is a working light bulb. Let's we'll, we'll think about that. There's some stuff we could do with it. Alright, let's take a look at this core. Okay, this core not in terrible shape. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to switch now. This copper shaft wire wheel is a no-go for doing what we're going to do now. It'll rip this thing apart and we don't want that. So we're going to use softer wheel. On low. And I'm going to hit the face of this thing shine it up. And people are like, oh no, you can't do that. Yeah, well watch this. You guys don't know why I'm going to shine it up. But I'm going to tell you. So, on the plot that. There. Guess what we're going to do with this? If you guessed we are going to do some ox guard on it, you are correct. Just a tiny bit. We want a super thin coat of ox guard. Try not to bridge the gap of the poles. I don't know that that would have any effect on it, but we're going to try to stay away from that. And then what I want to do is I want to get the excess off. I don't want it to be on here all thick. Okay, so now let's find a Q-tip. Find a Q-tip here, and we'll get our ox guard nice little coating on each one of the poles. 
which are these flat areas separated by little cutouts. I don't want too much on there, but I want some on there. Oxguard prevents corrosion and it also conducts electricity. Can you use it on locomotive wheels? Well, way back when, Lynn Westcott said you could and use it on track, but he was using a completely a, a, a formulation that is not modern. And he said you could, um, and basically I think what he said was it wasn't, it was somewhat difficult. Your rail ended up sticky. Um, your wheels ended up kind of sticky. Uh, what I found is that the ox guard gets less sticky the longer it's on here. So mine's been on my tracks for a couple weeks now. And I did put some on that AHM locomotive. And that, well, as you saw, that really makes a difference. All right, now I want to put some ox guard on the inside of these little clips that hold in the springs and the uh, brushes. So I'll put some on there. I'm not, it doesn't have to be a super thin, it doesn't have to be a thin coat on there because what's going under there is a spring. Now here is something that I learned when researching OxGuard. People who have old flashlights that get corroded have been using ox guard on the springs inside their flashlights to stop the corrosion and it works and they've had very good luck with that now I have good luck on my first try with coating the ends of the springs with ox guard I want to get some on there and these are the springs they can be somewhat generous we better use our tweezers to do this because once the spring is gone that means I gotta hunt down a new one and that is not that easy to do but you should know it is now my experience in working on locomotives that all these parts they're not unique to the brand they are common to a great many applications and there are places where you can buy little springs like this if you know the measurements they have the springs fortunately I don't need a thousand springs which is pretty much what they come in. Okay, we got some ox guard on our springs. All right, so we got our springs ox guarded, the covers, and the um, surface of the core. So we should not really need to coat the brushes. What we do need to do, I think, is probably wash these gears. Even though they look pretty good, though, don't they? I bet I already did wash them. And let's eh, let's go ahead and try it. I know that I did this once before, and because everything's really clean in here. All right, now let's do the other thing. Take a little mystery oil. Let's get just the bare. What we're going to do this is we're going to take our little screwdriver. We're going to put a drop on the end of our screwdriver. Okay, I've got a drop. Now, rather than pouring it on, what I want to do is I want to touch the very tip of that shaft because I don't want this oil spreading all down through it. But I do want it to lubricate the thrust where the thrust washers where the thrust washers are on pretty much everything else you do is where you want that lube to go so that when they go in that oil goes in where the thrust washer 
Okay. Did I get enough on this one? Okay. Yep. All right. So now we got our core back in here. Look, this hasn't taken very much time to do this. These Tycos, um, you want to get, you want to do this to get the experience you need to tackle more difficult projects. All right, I'm going to put some ox guard on the inside of these two sockets, or the springs and the, and the, uh, uh, brushes go. So I want to make sure that everything that's supposed to be conducting electricity is doing its job. That way we don't have to worry about not having the best contact. Okay, so now I know that on here this thing has a spot where one of those one of those contacts slides in from the bottom left corner. So I'm gonna put if I didn't know that I'd look at my picture. Whoops, I want to get a drop, which I already have. I want to get a drop in this bushing right there. Okay. Right, let's see if we can get this guy back on here. Okay. All right. Core's back in. Everything that we can ox guard has been ox guarded. Now for the tricky part. I'm going to take the light switch or the light off the light bracket. Because if I am going to put lights in this, I already know, since it's going to be this midnight special, which I love, I'm going to. I'm going to want to use that at some point. For an LED light that I plan on doing here. Alright, so I'm going to put the light guard. Because the light guard has a screw and it holds the cover on. Or the light contact. Okay. Got it. All right, now for the moment of truth. What we got to do is we got to get the brushes and the springs back in here without losing them. And I'll tell you what. Having done this, I know what I need. So first, watch. I'm going to do the lower one, do the lower left, because that one gets screwed in when it's done. I'm going to slide this thing just barely in place. Then I'm going to take my tweezers. I'm going to pick up a tiny brush. And I'm going to drop it into the hole. Okay, sitting on top of that is going to be my ox guarded spring. And I hold it in place gently. Here comes the tough part. Without launching the spring into outer space. Let's see if I got ox guard. Okay, got my ox guard. Without launching this into outer space, I'm going to depress it. I'm going to depress it with a screwdriver. And try to get it under the little lip. Which I did. Woof, that right in place. Just like that. Patience, is that's what you need right there. Now I can screw it in place. All right, we're looking good so far. Okay, now here is the tricky part. The next one does not have a screw. So it's come down from the top. It has a hole in it to hold it in place once there's a little knob and hole. So when slide it into its pocket, just barely, just enough, and I'm going to take with my tweezers, I'm going to pick up my brush, drop it in. 
Now let's see if we can get this spring in here without launching it in outer space. Let's get it over here where I need it. Oof, that was a close one. Okay, I got it sitting on the hole right now. I don't know if that's that focusing on that. It's sitting. Right here. Thinking that. Back up just a little bit so you can get a better focus. Okay. Here's the tricky part. Let's just double check. Did we put OxGuard where we wanted it? Yes, we did. Let's go back in. Take our small screwdriver. Depress the spring gently and try to get the little lip. Oops, I slipped under. It's going to happen a lot. Let's see if I can get the spring depressed enough and get this thing over the top. Okay, I got it. I got it. Now all I got to do is slide it, depress it, and in it goes. It's in place. All right. Now, let's move on out to the other side and put... Put this gear back on. This is the metal one where it goes down. And this is the one where you just press on. If you press it too tight, the motor can't move. If it's too loose, the gears lock up. I'm guessing we are pretty close, but let's just check. It's this big gear that goes under it. How are we doing? I believe we're close, not quite close enough. Now we are close. Okay, now these need this is where you gotta lubricate the gears. It says oil, do not, do not ever put oil in there. This, in 2018, putting oil in there is 100% unnecessary. It makes a mess. Even though it says right on here, oil with an arrow pointing to this gear. We don't put oil there anymore. I'm using high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease. And I, whoops, you can't see that. I am using, that's what I'm using, high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease. And I have been using this same grease for more than 25 years. And I can tell you right now, I recently rebuilt something that I lubed with that a long time ago. And it was still perfect. No deterioration of, gre of gears or grease. No hardened grease. That is the stuff. And this one can lasts me a lifetime. Let's zoom out again. Okay, this one can lasts me forever. This is how much I've used of it in 25 years. Because I'm only taking one drop at a time. Okay, so now I'm going to get a little lube, a little grease just under that little metal gear spread it out the nice thing about this stuff is it spreads through the gears but it doesn't get all over everything else put oil in here it goes everywhere okay give it a good turn Now, we don't need the other two gears on here for this test. Well, actually, 
We do, because I need to show you which way they go back. Um, before you put the big, big one on, put one of the little ones. Let's give it a little grease. I like to get a little grease right in. Just a little bit around there. I'm going to wipe off the excess. Yeah, I got way too much in there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a little turn and I'm gonna wipe it off. So I'll take my one of the one of the gears, get it in there. Hopefully I've gotten it onto the shaft. I'll tell you when it's cold, locomotives you have grease with this need need to warm up. They need a lap or two and get themselves nice and warmed up. Good. Nice. We got all gears back in here now. And what we're going to try now, let's hook her up. Okay, my guess. So I can hook the black wire onto the light bracket, I think. Mm, maybe not. Let's just try it the way we did before. So I'm going to hook on to the top guy. And I'm going to hook on right here at this guy. If I can with these crappy alligator clips. I don't want to hook on where the brush is. I don't want to bend that. So I'm going to get a hook on right here. I'm going to get some teeth in there. Okay. Let's put the power on and see if we got anything. Ooh, we do. Wow, barely any power applied and she's turning. That's halfway right there. It's winding up. Let's reverse it. Beauty. That is in a nutshell how to simply rebuild a power torque Tyco. Now that we got this thing ready, we can go on to the next task, which will be to prepare these wheel sets, which these were already prepared once, so that'll be easy. And hook it together and try it on the test track but that's it right there we just rebuilt this and we did it better than factory built so that's that's fantastic ox guard that's this stuff works all right that's it for part one